Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, we are gonna be talking about my go-to must-have, absolutely cannot live without brushes. This includes face brushes, eye brushes. Basically, if I'm traveling and I need to take all my brushes, these are my go-tos. So I'm gonna go through each one and tell you why I love them. If you guys are interested, let's get started. Starting off with the face, the Beauty Blender. This, you gotta have it. I've tried other dupes for the Beauty Blender sponge. All the other ones just don't feel as fluffy and as soft as the Beauty Blender one does. This one is my absolute favorite. I love the nude one and the black one. Not so much the pink. For some reason, the pink one, when I wash it, pink dye comes out. I don't know, I just don't really like that, personally. I find that this one and the black one are super soft, super fluffy, and I just absolutely love them. It gives you such a flawless finish. It doesn't leave any streaks on your face. Certain foundations, I find you need a beauty blender to apply them and when you try to apply them with a buffer brush They don't look as good. So this one always comes through for me for every foundation So beauty blender must have can't live with it. next we have the morphe g36 brush I just like that. It's a nice size. It covers really quickly when you're in a rush I also love to use this to buff foundation down the neck because it is so soft I always use this with my cream foundations I find that cream foundations blend in a lot nicer with a buffing brush, that's just my opinion. I've noticed especially with the Hourglass foundation that I didn't really particularly like this one with the Beauty Blender, but when I used a buffing brush, it was magic. G36 is really good for larger areas and for smaller areas, I love the Morphe G40. This one is same qualities as the other brush, only it's teeny weeny. It gives you a nice full coverage when you're buffing in. There's days where I don't want to wear foundation and I just want to spot conceal, so I will buff in with this brush. It looks really, really nice. It gives you a beautiful finish. And of course, like I said, it is Morphe, so it is pretty affordable. Love this brush. So the next brush is the Morphe E27. This is a really, really nice concealer brush. I love to apply concealer with beauty blenders, but when I don't, it's definitely this one. I find that this gives a really nice natural finish under the eyes. It really blends out the product nicely. It doesn't leave too much excess concealer in the fine lines and creases. It kind of just nicely buffs them all out so that I crease less throughout the day. It works really well with thicker concealers as well. Like for example, the Tarte Creaseless Concealer or the Bye Bye Under Eye Concealer. It just buffs it out perfectly. This is, what is this? Japanesque. This is a Japanesque Kumadori powder brush. There was a huge mystery as to whether it was Japanesque or NARS because they do make similar style brushes. But this is Japanesque. This brush is great for bronzing because it is a larger brush. It's really soft It does come to a slight taper at the tip so you could definitely use it to lightly contour I wouldn't like heavily contour with this But I use this with my bronzer every day and it prevents bronzer helmet because it is so large It is so fluffy, but still with the point it gets perfectly into the cheekbone covers everything It's just so nice the quality of these brushes is incredible. Absolutely. Don't leave me ever don't discontinue me. So next we have these two brushes and I brought both of them out because I really wanted to show you the difference between this one which is NARS and this one which is Japanesque. As you can see the handles are a little bit thinner on the NARS ones and this one is a little bit more of a taper and this one is a little bit fluffier. Like I said if you're on a budget you want something very similar. Honestly the ja I can't even tell the difference other than really the shapes. They are both incredible. I love them so much so I wanted to give you guys kind of like two different options and these are just like the smaller versions of the large brush I showed you. So typically I use the NARS one in this case because this is what I use to do a more sharp contour. I want you to see my cheekbones. This is the one that I use for that for precision contouring. It just has a really perfect taper at the tip here. Perfect size for that area. It's just beautiful, fluffy, comfortable, elite, rich, expensive. I'm really bad at describing things so I'm sorry. Apologies. I guess we can just move on to a blush brush, and this is a MAC 129. Would I say I cannot live without this blush brush? No, I could definitely use another blush brush. This is just an example of a good one that I like because it is not too small, not too dense, it's nice and soft. Sometimes if you use a brush that's too small for blush, which I find a lot of companies market blush brushes as tiny brushes, which I don't really understand because I want something that's a little bit larger that's gonna fit on the cheekbone and then blend perfectly into my bronzer. This one is a great size. It's not too small. It's really soft. It doesn't give me a harsh blush mark. So I really, really like it. You can definitely get a brush like this in other brands. It's not like, oh my God, you have to go out and buy this one. But this is a good example of what a good blush brush looks like for me. This is what I look for in that type of brush. MAC 
129. 129. All right, so next we have the MAC 137 brush, and this one has a really specific use for me. This is the brush that I use when I want that all over shimmery bronze look. When I want to use the Balm Cosmetics Mary Luminizer, I don't use it to contour or anything. I kind of just like to lightly sweep it over everywhere I put my bronzer on summer days or when I want to look extra glowy, but you don't want too much of that shimmer all over your face because it can be a little bit overwhelming. This brush is perfect to disperse that product evenly, softly, not too crazy. You're not gonna have like a streak of shimmer bronzer. It's really, really soft and since the bristles are so long, it doesn't just like pack on product. It's gonna give you a really light color payoff. It's very specific use for this brush, but I absolutely love it. And if you're into that all over like shimmery bronze look for summer or spring, then this is a really nice brush for that. So next we have our highlighting brushes and fan brushes are kind of where it's at for me right now, only because it makes it so easy to just make a little line of highlight. It keeps it all linear, makes your cheekbones look really sharp. It's just a perfect brush to apply highlight. If I don't use fan brushes, I'll use like larger blending brushes like this. So if you don't have fan brushes at home, this is something I learned from Patrick Ta. He's a celebrity makeup artist and he uses smaller brushes like this because he feels like he has more control. I like to use fan brushes and I'll switch it up between that. I wanted to give you examples of two fan brushes that I reach for all the time. This one is by Morphe and it's the M310 and it's only $5. It does look like it's been through some shit right now. Okay, it does. I'm not gonna lie. Like there's some bristles you know, but $5 is a really good deal, super affordable. And then there's Japanese, which is phenomenal, amazing. I love it and the bristles are all, you know, somewhat intact. This one is $20. You can see the price difference. There's definitely um, a difference in the way they look. The Morphe one has just, it's kind of been through something, you know, it looks a little like it didn't get a fresh blowout type of vibe. And this one is still pretty compact and linear. I like them both. So whichever one, I'm giving you two options. Okay. All right, so next we have this little baby Japanesque brush, 915 to be exact. I've had it for so many years. It's been with me for a very long time and it's still here. I'm still holding on to it as one of my favorite brushes. What I like about this one is compact size, which is nice because it's a great brush to put in your purse. And I'll tell you why. I use this brush to buff out my under eyes or apply a little bit of powder to my under eyes. And what's great is it just fits perfectly in that socket and it's soft enough to buff out any creasing throughout the night. I don't always apply more product. I'll just kind of like turn into the corner of the party and like dip into my bag and just just real quick, blend out any creasing that's happening and then that's it, put it back in my bag. This is the perfect brush for that because it's soft, it buffs those creases out and it's compact so you can fit it in any of your bags. Shit, you can fit this in your wallet, it's so small, but like keep it covered, you know what I mean? All right, so these were all the face brushes. Moving on. Next we have the Zoeva 142. This is a concealer buffer brush. However, I don't use it for buffing concealer. I use this for eyeshadow base. I'll tell you why, because this buffs out like especially MAC soft ochre paint pots or any of the paint pots, it buffs out the most thin, beautiful, even layer of eyeshadow base over your eye space. Sometimes if I use any other brushes or if I use my fingers, I feel like um, I could leave like some patchiness here and there, but this will just buff everything away. And if you have patchiness on your eyeshadow base, that's where you're going to run your eyeshadow over that. It's going to look patchy and it's just, it's going to be a mess. You're not going to be able to blend it out. I have found that these types of brushes buff out the best on the eyeshadow. Different brands carry this type of brush. This is just the style of it so you know if you're into it you can kind of pick one up from any brand uh, they just they're perfect for eyeshadow base must have next I'm gonna talk about the Sigma concealer f70 brush I also don't use this for concealer I use this for carving out my brows or applying for example ColourPop eyeshadows anything that's a cream base that I want to apply to the lid I use this brush I find that flat concealer brushes just work really well to get shimmery eyeshadows on the lid or any like detailed concealing as and like sometimes I'll put concealer under my wing to like clean it up, sharpen it up. So this is kind of the brush that I use for that. So just a tip, if you have tried ColourPop shimmery eyeshadows and they don't go on as well, either use your finger or use a flat concealer brush because these are synthetic hairs and it just picks up the product a lot better. All right, next we have a flat shader brush. This is one of my favorite brushes and I feel like I would be lying if I didn't put it in my video. However, the downside is, is that it has no name on it. I've had it for so long, don't know where it came from. It's like super thin and it's just, super soft. It's the perfect brush to apply eyeshadow on my lid, on my brow bone. If anybody knows where this is from, let me know. Since I don't have a name, I will give you an alternative. This one is from Zoeva and it's the 234 flat shader brush. This one also is a little bit thicker. So if I turn them on 
their sides. You can see that um, the Zoeva one has a little bit more bristles, it's more dense. If Zoeva is a little bit hard for you to get, MAC 239 also makes a really nice flat shader brush. I would use all three of these. This one just happens to be my favorite. I think it's just, it's worn in. It's just my brush, it's me, I love it. Not much more to say about a flat shader brush. They work great with powders. This is more for matte eyeshadows on the brow bone or even satin eyeshadows. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the fun brushes. I love blending brushes for the eyes. They're probably my favorite brushes to collect. And even when I first started doing makeup, anytime I bought a blending brush, it was so beautiful to me. I love the way they look. I used to love the MAC 217. Buying a new one of those for me was magical. Also, I just felt some type of way when I bought one. I just thought it was like so nice, so expensive and they hold a special place in my heart. I even prefer to clean blending brushes. Like out of all the brushes, I love to clean them. I think it's because I love them so much. To be more specific, like Smith Cosmetics blending brushes are the absolute hands down best I've ever tried in my life. Like I could literally just only use their blending brushes for the rest of my life and be happy. I used to think nothing could replace a MAC 217. That's just kind of like the standard blending brush, which is also incredible. I love it, but I just, I love the Smith brushes so much more now. Now, and these are just staples for me. My favorite blending brushes from them are the 235, which is this one right here. It also has a lot of control. It has a really nice taper to a fine tip. I like to use this for my transition colors, any larger areas in the crease. This one works perfectly. This is the 230, which is a lot smaller than the 235. It's more of a long, fluffy pencil brush. This is my best way of describing it. This is one of my favorites for just smaller blending areas, I guess. And then lastly, we have the 247 and this one is very similar, comparable to, I would say, the MAC 217, but it's like a universal crease brush. You could use for anything because it doesn't have like that really fine point taper. When it has a taper like these, like for example, the 235 has a nice fine point, it's gonna give you like a targeted area to cover. So like if I wanna do a cut crease, this is so good for that. Just because it is smaller, compact, I just love it. Especially if you have like smaller creases or eyelids, they just have a blending brush for every eye shape I feel. Hopefully I explained that. Okay, I hope. And then lastly for the blending brushes, I have the 228 crease brush by Zoeva. This one is not absolutely necessary, but it's nice to have. It's one of the nice to have brushes for me because it works really well to blend out the edges of your eyeshadow. I don't necessarily use this for cut crease to define the crease. Uh, if you have a larger lid space and a larger crease space, then this would probably work really well for you as a transition shade brush. It's a really nice, good quality brush that I keep, but yeah, that's what I use it for. Just All right, we're almost finished here. Just have a few more. Next, we have the Smith 257 brush. This brush has a very interesting shape. I just, I don't think I've ever seen another brand have a brush like this. It's almost like a flat brush, but then it comes to a point. It's very, very different. I like to use this brush to buff out the under eye because it does have that fine point so the point will really target the product right under the lash line and then the soft fluffiness of the base will blend it out as you're applying the product and I just really love this brush for that I also love this for and I know this is weird to a lot of people but contouring the cupid's bow it's a weird thing but if you want your cupid's bow to look deeper and more defined you can take a really light amount of contour powder and just put it right here and it's like something about it fits perfectly in that little area and it doesn't put the product on too aggressively so that's really what I use it for but also the under eyes really nice brush for that they also make a tinier version of that I just kind of wanted to show you the difference between the two this one is also really good for the under eye I like the larger one better but I wanted to show you the two different sizes just here on camera because I do have them both in my like go-to brushes, but I, I know I don't use this one as much as I use the larger one. Then next I have two brushes that I absolutely love. These are my go-to brushes when I smoke out my lower lash line. Must have, can't live without, absolutely, positively need these brushes in my life. This one is the one by Dose of Colors. It's their pencil brush. And this is the Morphe E36. Very similar brushes. I would say um, the Dose of Colors one is a little bit more narrow. Gives you a little bit more of a controlled application and the Morphe one is a little bit fluffier, so it's gonna give you a more diffused application. It's nice to have both of them in my go-to brushes because depending on which one I pick up for my under eye, I use the other one for like an inner corner highlight, so it has more shimmer on it. So next we're gonna talk about liner brushes. Liner brushes are very important to me. They cannot be replaced. 
They have to be these brushes as of now. In the future, who knows? Maybe I'll find something else. But this one is from the craft store. This is from Michaels. I picked it up in October when I was buying brushes for makeup tutorials and one day I just decided to use it for eyeliner and it was magical. Like we became one, okay? This brush is everything to me. It's just a really small little thin brush. This, it says it's number two, level two. I'll put it in the description box for you guys, but it makes the perfect little flick. It's narrow enough to get that really thin part of the wing. It's easy to apply liner with this. Um, I do always use gel liner, so incredible, 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 incredible. Hold please. Incredible, amazing, show-stopping, spectacular, never the same, totally unique, completely not ever been done before, unafraid to reference or not reference, put it in a blender, shit on it, vomit on it, eat it, give birth to it. I kind of set up it on myself. Katie sent me that video. It just worked perfectly for this moment, so there you go. Another liner. Oh my god! <laughs> the phone just kept going. So this is another liner brush, and it's very new to me. Um, Katie also brought me onto this brush. This is the Sona Kashuk number twenty-seven brush. This is a really, 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 really good eyeliner brush. Some people do liner better with this, and some people work better with angled brushes. Angled brushes, I would say, are a lot easier for beginners or anyone who's new to a wing because the hardest part is kind of getting a straight line, and angled brushes already give you that guideline. If you struggle with eyeliner I would say that this one would be better this one is really good for like detail you're comfortable doing wing liner but this one you're gonna get an awesome wing every time and it's super stiff I hate angled brushes that are too flimsy they're the the bristles kind of like flare out too much then your eyeliner is messy but this one is sturdy and it gives the perfect wing and the very last two brushes I have to talk about are angled brushes the Mac 266 this is a really great universal angled brush. It's synthetic hairs which I like for angled brushes because like I said natural hairs on angled brushes they get too messy for me and synthetic ones stay really nice and together compact. They don't spring out on you as much. So I like the 266. There's also a 263 that looks exactly like this but it's natural hairs. Um, this one just works great with eyeliner, for brows, for detail work under the lash line. It's kind of just a universal angled brush. Works for everything. Love it. And then lastly, we have the 7B ABH brush. This is a really, really good eyebrow brush for the same reasons. It has synthetic hairs, it's stiff, sturdy, gives you really nice control over making those hair-like strokes. You don't wanna use a natural haired angled brush to do your eyebrows. I feel like it doesn't give you that sharp, crisp line that you need to make those hair-like strokes. This one is really good. It's nice because it has a spoolie on the other end, so you know you could just brush through it. You don't need to have multiple brushes in your hand, and that's if you're you're using like powder or pomade this is really really nice all right guys so that's it that's everything those are all my brushes that I love I hope you guys enjoyed this video found it helpful uh, let me know what you guys thought about it in the comments down below also let me know if there's any brushes that you guys love that you think I should try I'm always watching I'm always looking to find new brushes so if there's any brushes that are incredible let me know and I'll see you guys in my next video bye Action. <laughs> Shh. I'm so burpy. It has a really large, fluffy dough. <laughs> Ugh, you're sick. I don't know. This. Oh, God. Okay, okay. <laughs>